Let me have your attention for a minute. This is something for the ladies. I'm chilling with the queens of the stone age. Hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, if it's the nighttime, uh, and welcome to Queens of the Stone Age, the show where queens get together and smoke weed and talk about stuff. Uh, my name is Mary Gonzalez. I am your managing editor for Mary Jane, which, for those of you who don't know, is a cannabis media company founded by Snoop Dogg. Um, I am here today with, oh, well, before I introduce our lovely guest, who I will introduce in just a second. I want to say thank you to the Green Angels for providing us with some lovely weed. You can check out their website at greenangels.buzz. That's www.greenangels.buzz. Um, it is a mainly female weed delivery service, and their weed is some of the best in Los Angeles, I can attest. Um, I am here today with Emily O'Brien, who is the everything the ceo founder a web developer i just found out uh for mondo meds how are you doing great <laughs> uh, happy to be have uh, a little break from the computer <laughs> yeah yeah it sounds like it um it's i think we have a lot to discuss we were just discussing earlier how uh much emily does for this company it's pretty fucking impressive um but maybe we can start out by you explaining just what mondo meds is and you know, a general background of the company. Certainly. Um, so Mondo and kind of its family form, um, it's a, a cannabis company that I created to uh, replace Xanax. So essentially, I'm really looking for a, a daily edible for anyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone can benefit from microdosing cannabis. Not everyone benefits from kind of larger amounts of THC. Mm -hmm. And specifically, I'm really trying to figure out a way that people can kind of feel a little bit calmer, a little bit more happier, a little bit more fulfilled in their own lives. Because if everyone feels a little bit better, imagine how society would be. Yeah. You know, imagine how the world would react. Definitely. And so if I can do my little part to kind of push people in a happier, healthier direction, right. then everyone can benefit. Absolutely. So. And so Mondo Meds is a, from what I understand, it's a, well, not from what I understand, I've tried it a million times. It's like <laughs> one of my favorite things in the whole world. I fucking love it. It's so great. Um, it's basically a tasteless THC or CBD uh, powder mm -hmm. that you can put in anything at any dose that you want to. It has these adorable little like spoons that come with it. I love putting it in cereal and in yogurt and like you can put it in it's it's pretty versatile and incredible. Um, I'm curious, how did you how did you come to this formula to this like I don't know any other company that does a powdered THC. It's pretty unique. How did you come up with that idea and how did you um, follow through with it? Well, thank you. It's it's essentially it was kind of a long process. I didn't actually start um, Mondo with this in mind. This I started Mondo about six and a half years ago, mm -hmm. and it came up from the the need um, of a daily edible because I had a really really bad back injury and so. I needed an edible during the daytime. Mm -hmm. And so I actually had created a granola bar that um, that you could have during the day. And it was, um, I had actually tried to figure out the best strain for kind of daytime relaxation. Mm -hmm. I found that Blue Dream was the best for that. Classic, yep. So I made the Mondo bars. And mm. so that's what I was doing up in Washington for about three years. And so they were just a granola bar, just like? They weren't just a granola bar. <laughs> they were a special <laughs> bar. <laughs> <laughs> they were fantastic. They, they were the best granola bars, I'm they sure. Were, oh, come on. They were sea salt almonds, Ooh. toasted coconut, nice that molasses sounds so good. flavor. Oh, come on. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Please bring so, me some. Yeah. So um, so I actually had started the company with this. But after some time, um, my relationship with cannabis had actually changed a little bit. That mm. I, um, I started to get a little bit more anxious the more stoned I got. And I kind of mm -hmm. needed to be a bit, you know, bright and on point. And so... Um, I actually kind of reduced the amount of cannabis that I needed, but I was still kind of feeling a bit of anxiety coming around, just, mm -hmm. you know, being a woman in this yeah. day's society. <laughs> it's it's going to happen. Yeah, we all uh, have anxiety here. <laughs> yeah. And so I was kind of realizing just like, okay, how can I, you know, utilize what I have right now into kind of more of a form that would be more effective for mm -hmm. this? And so, and how could I make this? Because as I was saying earlier, this is, I wanted it to be a daily edible for everyone. Right. And not everyone, well, one, wants to eat granola, right. unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, I can't <laughs> fathom why, but sure. <laughs> and then, two, not everyone benefits from a larger amount. So I'm like, okay, how can I make it, um, how can I make a product that is almost a no-brainer, someone that it's it's good for someone who's nervous to try cannabis mm -hmm. and who would actually really be able to, like, be precise and, and dose with it. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I was actually making a lot of superfood smoothies. And mm -hmm. so, like, making, like, maca and putting bee pollen and spirulina right. and, like, 
like, okay, how can I make, you know, this amazing right. little thing and put it into that? I'm like, okay. Right. And I, gotta, I feel I, like the answer to that oftentimes is like a tincture or something, right? But you right. went a totally opposite route. Right. It usually would be a tincture, but essentially right. I created a powdered tincture. Okay. So that's basically what this that's is. It's like dehydrated tincture. Yes, exactly. Interesting. Yes. And so the reason why I kind of went towards this, this route instead of just going for a straight up tincture was that not everyone's body processes tinctures the same way. Oh. So a tincture can either be um, an MCT, like a coconut oil mm-hmm. extract, or it can be an alcohol extract. And so kind of depending on how you hold it in your mouth mm-hmm. and how long, like how much you've eaten and things like that, mm-hmm. it really kind of can either hit your body in an edible format or in like a smoking format. Right. So, you know, when you eat an edible, it can take like two hours to hit right. you and it can be really, really heavy. Mm-hmm. And the reason for that is because the THC actually changes from delta nine to delta 11 oh. or so a hydroxy. Uh-huh. Um, and so THC. is that another cannabinoid, Delta 11? Um, it's kind of like an advanced form okay. of THC. Okay. So essentially it's that really, really heavy, stony feeling. Uh-huh. So like when you eat Blue Dream, it kind of is a bit heavier rather than when you smoke Blue Dream, it's it kind of has up. this more enlightened Got feeling. It. So the Mondo powder like bypasses all of that. It goes straight into your bloodstream immediately. Oh. You don't have to hold it underneath your tongue. You don't need to like put it with like hot foods. It's just, it, it just, it just hits. It just hits. So it allows people to really kind of have that more elevated, lighter, you know, form of right. high. But in addition to that, it also lasts for about three hours or so. Oh, so it's got like all of the benefits of edibles without any of the downturn. Yeah, kind That's of. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And so this like formula itself, I mean, maybe, I don't know if it's like a trade secret or not, but can you talk a little bit about like just how it's made? Like, is it a concentrate or is it a... Um, so there's, there's two different ways that I make. So like the original Mondo with the THC mm. is a whole plant-based extraction. That's okay. really kind of what um, really differentiates it between right. other tinctures or even between like other so edibles. leaves, stems, the whole thing. Exactly. Right. The whole kit and caboodle and I do a really long um, essentially I, I soak the leaves I cook it at different temperatures and then also at the very end I extract the chlorophyll. Oh. So the chlorophyll is actually what makes um, the cannabis that really like bitter, grassy, oh, like just like, like when you make a funky. weed butter and yeah. it's kind of, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm able to actually um, ex- extract a lot of that. Even though like the cannabis um, taste can be nostalgic for some, mm-hmm. most people it's not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't so, think most people enjoy that. I mean, myself yeah. included, to be honest. You know, I, I, you know, I, I can like get Like in the right occasion, fun. maybe. Yeah, but, no, exactly. Yeah. The right occasion. But, you know, when it's not like a daily ritual yeah, habit, yeah. which, you know, it was for me back in right. the day. And so that's why I wanted to create this. I'm right. Like, okay, how can I make this as palatable as possible. Right. And, and so, also a butter is high calorie. You know, if you're yeah. trying to like not eat a cake every day, that's that can be difficult. And yeah. this is zero calorie, yeah, I want to uh, say. Two calories. Two calories. <laughs> okay. My mistake. <laughs> Don't call the FDA on me. That's my bad. Um. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, no, it, it's great because it does make that uh, that option of not having like a really big calorie intense every right. time you want to have medicine, mm-hmm. you know. Right. Um, right. And so this was the THC version. Now mm-hmm. you just recently announced, I don't think this is released yet the mondo cbd version is that right um yeah little cl- yeah <laughs> little, a little correction yeah, yeah. Yeah, let me know do it tell me <laughs> bring so, it on yeah, i can take so, it so the cbd one was actually just released um in fall of last year so okay. very very recently very recent. um and so the the method of extraction is actually a bit different from that because i'm using um a full spectrum hemp oil extract okay um i'm also playing around with different forms of like the actual hemp stems and leaves and biomass oh. and so we're going to be doing some uh, experimenting over like the next two and a half months or so now that the farm bill has passed uh-huh. and so so now farmers are more likely to be able to do contractual farming and things like that rather right. than like just a few places are able to source, you know, our full spectrum. So from. you'll be able to source hemp from a variety more places now that farmers are allowed to do that, basically. Yeah, essentially. And I'm able to like essentially what I want to do is I want to have a lot of contract farming with a, a bunch of little mom and pop places um, mm-hmm. so that we can have really great quality control and that each you know farm is well taken care of, not really right. kind of growing things on industrial scale. Right. Um, it's really uh, there's a lot of environmental factors that also have to go in with you know growing cannabis and growing hemp and things like that Mm -hmm. and so if you're taking things to such a massive industrial scale there are some drawbacks so 
I'm happy to have this kind of pulling over saying that, yes, hemp is okay, you know, and then this is just the first step in the process, you know, to make everything. Right. So that really like opened a lot of doors for you, I imagine, in terms of being able to up the quality of the product and all of that. Well, not even even just like um, opening up doors, but relinquishing of a lot of anxiety. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Right. You don't have to feel like you're breaking the law. You don't have to feel like it's a. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it was kind of a fun series of events. Um, So I actually had to stop producing the THC um, last Last year for a bit just because of licensing okay. issues and things like that. So what I did was like, perfect, I will do the CBD to kind of hold things down in the interim because I've already been planning on doing it. But, right. you know, as you get busier and busier, like, where's the time? Right. <laughs> I have no idea. So, OK, great. Now I have more time. Right. So I launched the CBD. And then uh, a month and a half later, after I'd spent, oh, so much money on packaging, uh, California was like, yeah, CBD is not legal for consumption. Ooh, so it's legal to grow the hemp and to have the hemp and to use it for things like clothes, but not like explicitly for consumption. Is that right? So that was just kind of like this weird holdover Uh law that happened for like four months because essentially what happened was one CBD company became federally legal. So Uh essentially went through the FDA trials. Mm -hmm. Um, and so California was like, cool. And is that like Apetalex, that company? Um, like the pharmaceutical? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I and remember what the yeah, company yeah, is. Uh, but... G- GW Pharmaceuticals. Yes, there you go. Yep. And then the Epidiolex. Yes. Right. And so the, so California looked. They're like, cool. So this one company is FDA yeah. approved. Right. So nobody else is. <laughs> that <laughs> like, makes sense. That's like, totally, fully logical. I get it, right? <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. Jesus. So, so that was quite frightening. Um, yeah. And so then with the farm bill, essentially, it doesn't say that, like, necessarily that like, CBD is legal on, like, a full, you know, spectrum. Right. But they're saying that the base plant, in order to extract the CBD, we're not going to go after you. The right. 50 states, it's totally okay. If you're okay. growing the plant, if you're purchasing the plant itself, it's, you can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and just because, um, yeah, no, this is a plant. This is right. an industrial agricultural plant. Yeah, um, I mean, it's so, like cotton. It's crazy that it's been illegal for all this fucking time. No, it's of, ridiculous. of course, like, but because it is like cotton. Right, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> and so earlier we were talking a bit about um, just your experience. This CBD is currently or is going to be available online? Yes, yes, nice. yes, yes, yes. It is available online. Um, right now we have a few retail partnerships as mm-hmm. well um, and kind of looking to expand. Yeah, so. what, uh, is there anywhere that people can potentially go to buy this in a store? Um, well, we just have a, a new retail partner, uh, Urban Outfitters, actually decided to reach out and wow. they're going to be doing kind of a test run in the next couple of weeks or so. Amazing, and that's so that's huge. That's right, that's oh like for... Oh my God, that is like I mean, exp- Explosive! You huge. guys are by far, I imagine, like the first CBD company to ever be in Urban Outfitters for sure. And yes, like yes, yes, a yes. Clothing We're... store and like a mainstream store like that. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, really. Um, I'm I'm really pumped about it because um, this is going to be a way to really kind of one break into the mainstream market, but also um, younger people are really kind of mm-hmm. feeling this kind of foreboding anxiety. Yeah. And so this is a way to I kind can of test. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hello. Yeah. Here oh, I my am. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. Um, and so this is going to essentially help pave the way so that people can feel much more proactive in their own life. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times, at least for myself, when I feel like really, really high anxiety, it's kind of like I have a dissociation. Yeah, absolutely. And it's kind of like I'm like almost watching my life from my, you know, this outside perspective. It's like you're taking words out of my mouth. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> but at the you. same time, like I'm watching myself from out mm-hmm. here and like my body's like, ah! yeah. <laughs> It's a really good description. Like, like, yeah. Why yeah. Are you doing this? Yeah, I felt that. Like when you made that move, I was like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> Same. Yeah. And so that's going to be like a way for all of these you know, many anxious young people who are, you know, yeah. doing things like browsing Urban Outfitters and, you know, whatever. Yeah, because they don't be need to, to, like, go to a health food right. store. They don't need to say, like, you know what, today's the day I'm going to decide right. to make better healthy decisions. Right, or I'm going to sign up for a dispensary or I'm going to do all these various right. things that are pretty, like, yeah. time-consuming and hard. You're probably going to be in that store anyways if you have to, like, buy a blazer for work or whatever, yeah. you know? <laughs> that's, uh, wow, and that's amazing. And so yeah. earlier we were talking about also, uh, and I'm so curious about this that I just can't mm. wait to ask you, uh, you were talking about the uh, mechanism on your store that allows people to buy CBD and how hard it is for Mm. any companies involving hemp or marijuana to use any online retailers, really. You'll get shut down by Venmo and PayPal. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned that you developed the whole website on your own. Yeah. 
that's insane. <laughs> How did you come to decide to do that? How did you teach yourself? I mean, it seems to me from from you know the small amount of time that I've known you that you were pretty much the only person in this whole company. I've asked about the packaging. You're like, oh yeah, that was me. And I'm asked about the website. And you're like, yeah, that was totally me. <laughs> um, did you come to a decision to be like, I'm going to be the one to do everything? Or was it more just like, I can do it and I don't want to be slowed down? Um, well, uh... <laughs> It comes up from scarcity. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yep, absolutely. I can only imagine. So, uh, I mean, I've been I, I've owned this company for six and a half years. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is actually my third company. And wow. So I've already kind of done a little. So you had like, a little experience. Yeah, a little mm-hmm. experience and failing, which mm-hmm. is you know good to have. Right. <laughs> so had you developed whole websites before? Um. Yeah, I actually uh-huh. have. Um. I've done kind of you know simpler websites in the past, but this kind of latest pull was just because um I loved using Squarespace mm-hmm. because it. Allows you. We're to not kind sponsored. Of, yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a good company. Well, I well just because it was easy to kind of right. pl- plug and play. Yeah. Um, I didn't have to really think about the design because I'm totally. very design oriented. Design is essentially the way that will kind of craft a story in someone else's mind. Right. It's really important to be able to kind of express emotions right. and things and, like that. So and it can really bridge a gap between somebody who smokes weed constantly and knows everything about weed and someone who's maybe a little curious. Yeah. Right? yeah. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Um, so I I was able to kind of you know not do, use too much effort and kind of use this platform. Mm-hmm. But Squarespace, along with many other you know platforms, uh, use Stripe. Okay. And so Stripe does not like CBD. And so what is Stripe? So CBD uh, Stripe is a credit card processor. Okay. So if you wanted to use you know the Square uh, fancy payment processor, or okay. if you wanted to you know uh, have an Etsy store, right. or anything and that's like used that. because as a weed company, you can't have access to, like, federal credit card institutions, like MasterCard Correct. or something like that. Okay. Correct. Well, I mean, uh, we, we can have... Um so technically, with like Mastercard and things like that, you can't actually have a card within that particular system. Mm-hmm. Um, if someone, if you wanted to process payments, if someone was like, "Hey, I'm going to give you money through the internet," right. that particular processing system, um, they need to say okay to CBD. I see. And Stripe is like, no. And Stripe is the biggest one. Okay. And then there's also you know QuickBooks, uh-huh. um, which they say no. Wow. And there's also um, you know kind of a bunch of other things. Um, whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I (laughs) had to go through so many barriers and so many hoops and I was finally able to get my own credit card processor, Mm. but they don't work with Squarespace. Oh no. So I'm like, crap. So what did you do? I had to build a website. (laughs) Wow. And so you just ended up being like, all right, I guess I'm just going to have to do this from scratch because it's the only person. Wow. Well, I mean, I've worked with other website developers in the past, Mm -hmm. um, but I've realized that as I'm working with these other people that I'm a huge control freak. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I understand. I really do. <laughs> so, like, uh, I'm like, I'll, I'll put together, like, okay, yes, here's the testimonials page. I kind of want the quotes to come up like this right. and this and this, and then they like, send it back to me, and then I come back with like red marks over everything, and I'm like, no, 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 just one more pixel to the right, one more pixel to the left, and they're like, Emily, it's two thirty in the morning. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, lose my fucking come mind. on, <laughs> come on, no, just like, just a little bit more. Like, no. They're like, take some more Mondo meds and go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, so now I'm going to do it the other way around mm-hmm. where I'm going to design the building blocks and things okay. like that and I'm going to put red markers on myself uh-huh. and then I'm going to send it off and be like okay now Build can this. you can you you know change just one more pixel to the right just right. you know <laughs> and can you make it fade in just a little bit nicer <laughs> totally totally and so I mean you are like one woman who is running a whole ass operation and I mean that's a woman after my own heart I love that um but there's not I mean there's you know, the weed industry, I think, is definitely more friendly to women who do things like that, in my experience, than other industries. Um, but there's still not a lot of women who are, like, running their own companies fully like that. Um, have you – you said you ran two other companies before this. Mm-hmm. Were they cannabis-oriented? No. Um, the first company I had was actually an adult entertainment company. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh- <laughs> we are pro-sex worker here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pro-sex um, worker company. Well, no, we did uh, bachelor and bachelorette parties. Okay. So I, you know, straight Uh things like that and then then we also did naked housekeeping (laughs) and naked fire spinning wow that one seems kind of dangerous that's Uh, like is there some liability issues with the uh, fire spinning no they just had to pay extra oh okay (laughs) wow wow that is I mean I would certainly pay extra for that if I were throwing a bachelorette party and it was like you can have like a cop who gets undressed (laughs) or you could have a naked fire spinner I'd be like yeah I know what I'm doing like for sure obviously the latter wow amazing and so did you do anything in the adult industry after that or was that kind of your only no no 
No, I ran screaming. You ran screaming, screaming. from it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, it is a... Whoa. I've got a lot of close friends in the industry, and they are tougher than I am. Yeah. Like, it is, oh, like, very, my very gosh, tough. gosh. Absolutely. You gotta really, yeah. like, fend for yourself. No, it's ab- like... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but it was also that I had started this company in a really dry, dusty little college town that oh, okay. wasn't open during the summertime. So it was oh, like... Oh, it was just hard to yeah, run something like, like that. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Good fail number one. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, you've got to have a couple before you have a success, yeah. right? Like, yeah. if it's a success right away, I feel like that's sus. And you want to, like, be like, mm, why is it just happening immediately? Like, Well, also, people don't s- question why they are successful. Right, right. They're like, pop the champagne. Right, Not exactly. Like, why are we... Right, and what can we do-, do to continue it and, like, keep Precisely. doing the same thing that's making us successful? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah if you pop the champagne too early, that's... Yeah. Although I do feel like you could probably pop a champagne at this point, right? Like, that's a... Um... <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> still, still working yeah. on it. <laughs> and so you're, you said you had another company after yeah. that one. So what yeah, was that so one? Yeah, so the other one uh, was Naked Vine Crafts. Mm-hmm. You know, we're on like a little naked, yeah. you know, nakedness. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Honestly, weed and nakedness uh, yeah. are like my two expertise. They so. like really just <laughs> yeah, they go together fully. <laughs> Spent all day at home just in my underwear, like blunt, blunt, blunt. It's, there it's you my go. lifestyle. I mean, it's a it's a Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, and a Wednesday, and a Thursday, <laughs> and a Friday. <laughs> so we're hanging out after now. Yeah. <laughs> I feel a long and fruitful friendship for me. <laughs> perfect, perfect. <laughs> and so, yeah, so your second company, was it uh, yeah, weed so, or? Uh, no, so the Naked Vine Crafts was, actually, was Naked Bacon. <laughs> um, no, I actually took um, old wine barrels and I broke them down and I made it into art pieces. Interesting. Yeah. So, what kind of art pieces? Uh, so like either like tabletop planters or I'd make like votive wine um, staves or I'd make, like I'd take like the barrel rings and I'd like hammer them into like art shapes. And, wow. Like, so is that glass blowing? Like, um, no, just kind of more wood. Woodworking and okay. crafting and kind of like plants as well. Kind right, of right, right, right. Introduced, you so know, like before the succulents them. became hot. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you brought in that trend. Yeah. <laughs> so they were Thanks. like the barrels, like the big like wooden yeah. barrels that they were kept in. Yeah, wow. I, I'm actually from Napa Valley. Oh, okay. And so I grew up in a winery. Oh, uh, wow. So I had access to these kinds of things. Totally, and, yeah. And so this kind of also like brings credence to like why I'm so... Um, oriented about like flavor food right. taste and like kind of there's a lot of similarities I think between yeah. like craft weed and the wine industry I feel like yes. I, I understand wine people more now that I'm like into weed I'm like oh this one smells like this and it tastes like that and blah 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 like it's my favorite oh, yes. thing right exactly <laughs> I'm always like I was like holding weed up to my friend's noses and being like smell that doesn't it smell like lemons like look at it <laughs> so do you or think like, that no. was yeah they're like alright Mira like no <laughs> so do you think that was kind of a catalyst for you getting into the weed industry just seeing the wine industry growing up and what they did with it um, was something that used to be you know prohibited kind <laughs> well kind of kind yeah. of in a way but essentially it was kind of um, a series of opportunities that kind of just lent itself mm-hmm. um essentially i had gone up to washington and i hated the weather the first time around so i moved back home to california mm-hmm. and then i you know started my my art business again and then i got bored of being in napa so i was like i need to go back to college and finish everything out mm-hmm. and i was actually going to college to um study mushrooms to become a mycologist oh wow amazing uh, like wanna... psilocybin and like or well, just like yeah, mushrooms in general Go to that. <laughs> but yes. I feel like no. I have <laughs> like how dare you, but absolutely yes, yes that's uh, what I was doing. Uh, yes. <laughs> No, but seriously, mushrooms can save the world, and I can agree, have a whole 100%. separate scenario yeah. only talking about Another mushrooms. Another episode where we just no, go deep into like, mushrooms, because frankly, I'm fascinated. Oh, sh- uh, they can eat plastic. Mushrooms can eat plastic? They can eat plastic. What do you mean they can eat okay, plastic? Okay, well, uh, next session. Yeah, we're going to we'll just tune in next time. <laughs> we'll go deep into that one. I'm going to be questioning you about that after this episode, because what the fuck? <laughs> so, uh, Washington State, there's only two colleges in the entire U.S. where you actually can get a mycological degree. Oh. Okay. And so I was like, cool, I'll go to one of two easy right. decisions. So <laughs> What is the back, other one? Where's the other uh, one? North Carolina. Okay, yep, I was like, easy choice. Mm, pig farms. Done and done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no, thank you. <laughs> Even though the trees are there, are beautiful. Yeah. Don't yeah. Wrong. Um, Not enough. <laughs> so I went up to Washington, and as soon as I got there, um, this is a hippy dippy school, mm-hmm. thus, you know, having mycological programs. Naturally, yeah. Um, <laughs> one can and assume. I was, yeah, one can <laughs> assume. So I dragged her there in junior year, and they're like, oh, we actually stopped offering that program. <gasps> 
And oh, I'm like, no. I just moved two states here to become a mycologist and fulfill my dreams so of saving got the world. all the way there yes, and I they were like, there, no. And they're like, no, we're actually not going to do that anymore. That sucks. And we'll, we will start it again in one year. And I'm like, oh, you mean by the time that I'm done with school? That is Great. so fucked perfect. up. This is perfect. Um, America so, is fucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so essentially, I went back into the business program, uh-huh. and I had also taken like they do stu- student self oriented studies, and I was like, I'll teach mushrooms on my own. It's fine. <laughs> Washington had just passed the recreational law, so Washington, the Colorado. Oh. I moved. I moved. It was there. just a second state, right? It was that had ever st- done it. Yes, okay. exactly. So right, they're right. just like boom, right then. Crazy. And, was, and this all happened like they're like, I moved there. No more mushrooms. It passed. So wow. I was like, oh, okay. All right. I guess well. That- <laughs> I guess I should open up a weed company. Right. Yeah. <laughs> fair, fair assumption, right? That makes sense. Right. It's like not a huge leap, I guess. I mean, it's a leap, but like from mushrooms yeah. to weed, it's yeah. like both a plant, yeah, you know. Close I guess one's a fungus. But. Yeah. And I, I really <laughs> wanted to start, you know, a restaurant in the past as well. Right. So I was like, here, this is going to be a right. marriage of all these things. This right. This is right. fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, but actually, because I went to such a hippie dippy school and I studied the business program, um, they were just like, so you're going to start, you know, like write up a business plan. And I'm like, a fictitious business plan. I'm like, Fuck Weed that. Company. <laughs> Weed, yeah. not fictitious. Yeah, actually yeah. do that. So, right, if we're going to do the work, you might as well do the work. Yeah, right? so uh, my shout out, Evergreen State College. Hello. <laughs> Thank you very much, Miss Brenda Hood. <laughs> Brenda Hood, if you're listening to you're this. You're amazing. Love you so much. We love you. Um, we essentially got the entire class to work on Mondo. Wow, um, that's every amazing. Every week, I would bring in three variations of a, of a granola bar. I'd have the class vote on taste, texture. Now, would the know. granola bars have weed in them, or would they be non-medicated? They were non-medicated in the business class. Right. Okay, and in but my out, student-oriented farming there you studies go. class to become a permaculture designer, mm-hmm. they were very medicated. <laughs> <laughs> highly medicated. <laughs> well, actually, it was I would, part of the course, though, I would, right? I it wouldn't was say highly medicated. I was testing numbers. Enough. Right. And and then I also dosage rea- is important. Yeah, it's, it's really, really, important. really, really important. Yeah. And yeah. then I also realized after, so I I made this really, really big batch of coconut oil, mm-hmm. and I was like super, super. Was like, it literally that big? Yes. Holy yes, shit. No, literally this big. I probably used keef and I used trim and like wow. all these different things. So like the first time I was making it before, mm-hmm. and I had probably got I think I got 149 milligrams per gram. We're Whoa. talking about like one particular little tiny wow. drop. That would be like 150. Grams. So I want to like. I want to like show like, okay, this is like probably a little bit less than a gram of a nug for anyone who's looking at the video mm-hmm. right now. I'm holding up a wheat nug. And this was how many milligrams? Oh. Um, it was, you said it was how many per gram? Oh, well for that, I mean, it, like, it was 150 milligrams per gram. But it was a liquid, so it was even li- tinier yeah, than Yeah, so this. it was like, it was like the minuscule like, drop. Like a wheat nug like that is probably like... 80 yeah, milligrams or something. something like that. I mean, that's but even really, if you were really to smoke, strong. Yeah, but even if you were to smoke all of that in one, right. it, it still, still wouldn't, wouldn't hit you all at once because it's, it's not, not as bio. Yeah, right. it's not as bioavailable. Right. So <laughs> I had made I had made this like giant thing, and so I'm I'm making the granola bars, and at the end the granola bars were 70 milligrams per gram. Okay. But uh, the first rounds, I was like, maybe 200's good. Yeah. Maybe 300's good. It's try it fine. out. Why not? <laughs> I annihilated people. Yeah. I mean, like vomiting in the middle of class. <laughs> like actual I mean, vomiting. Actual vomiting, just wow. like vertigo. Um, wow. Just that was gnarly. I mean, I've gotten a lot of people too stoned <laughs> in my life. Like that's something that I do a lot. I think because I just people come over and I'm smoking a bunch of weed and they don't know I have a big tolerance, right? Yeah. And they're like, oh, like I'll smoke some weed. I'm like, okay, here, like have fun. And I'm not like it's really strong. Yeah. Like, don't do. Like be careful. And then they get way too stoned and no one has a good time. Yeah. It's that <laughs> seems like that times a million that yeah. is crazy well and also i, I kind of so i didn't really know what i was doing either because right. it was all just like experimentation just my friends out. were like sure we'll be your guinea right pigs. who cares <laughs> <laughs> we like weed and whatever that is so funny but you adjusted it after a while yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so then so then i kind of realized oh okay i gotta i gotta go down the dosage mm-hmm. go down the dosage and now that we are older and wiser mm-hmm. we know that mm-hmm. if someone gets too stoned you can give them a bunch of cbd Okay. And it's going to I had make somebody it on the cycle. podcast. I had somebody on here who took one hit of a blunt that I was smoking and got way too stoned. And afterwards, she was like, how do I get less stoned? And I was like, you take CBD. And she looked at me and she was like, you're the devil. You're telling me to smoke more weed. <laughs> That is not what I'm saying. It does make you less stoned. You can look it up. And she was like, I don't trust you for a second. You had me smoke that demon weed. <laughs> that so, devil's lettuce. 
lettuce. Exactly. <laughs> so shout out to shout out to Chrissy. You were a lovely guest. Hey Chrissy, <laughs> you can use some CBD. <laughs> so uh, so you were testing out the dosages, and then did you get stocked in dispensaries? Did you go to a distributor? Yeah. No, I I did not. I did all the distribution myself. Wow. Um, I I should have guessed. <laughs> yeah, I have like this like semi masochistic theme going on. I'm like, come on, let's do it harder. <laughs> Business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For somebody who's a big fan of weed, I feel like most people wouldn't expect that. They'd be like, yeah. you're a stoner, right? Like, what are you doing? I'm like, work harder. <laughs> but uh, just to yourself. <laughs> no, I actually did a wonderful play. So essentially, mm-hmm. um, I had, uh, I so uh, at the end of the business lesson or a business program, finished the granola bar at the end of the farming program, got the milligrams right. And then um, I... Uh, did graphic design. I learned how to do graphic design. I learned how to do wow. packaging. I found out how to get 100% compostable packaging. So I'm very environmentally conscientious. And I was and like, and you just like just Google. Like that's how you like. Ah, uh, a lot of googling. Yeah, and a lot of talking to uh, manufacturers and food oh. scientists and things like that. Okay. Like, okay, how now? What do I do about shelf life? How right. do I test for shelf life? Right. What's a silica pack? Oh my god. Uh, do yeah. I like you know? All I've never considered things. it before, but there's so many factors. <laughs> yeah. So there's kind of a lot of things. Um, so I finally, great, cool. Now I have this amazing little Mondo bar. Right. Um, and so I, I finally got it, and, and it was my birthday. And I was Ooh. like, I was like, oh, you know, I could use this to my advantage. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's my birthday, please. Is that literally? Yeah. No, literally. I, I opened up thirteen. I, I opened up thirteen accounts. Oh my god, amazing! So I was like, it's my birthday. <laughs> And you're gonna, birthday you, gifts. And you got to buy a case. Oh of my god. Mondo. That's <laughs> Mondo bars. <laughs> so amazing and it works. <laughs> and it works. <laughs> You are a natural businesswoman. I can tell. I can tell. That is amazing. Wow. And so you just yeah. got stocked in, and this was in Oregon, Washington? Uh, Washington. Washington. Yeah, Washington State. So it started in like Olympia, Washington. Okay. And then we were able to kind of transfer up up into Seattle, um, built a commercial kitchen up there, wow. which was wild. Um, I mean, like, I was scavenging through like grocery stores that just shut down. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm running through it, and like, I'm like trying to find the contractor. I'm like, how much for that refrigerator? Like, amazing. I'll give you like five dollars for all these sheet pans. Oh my god, that's you know. so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. And so was it the same commercial kitchen that you used when you decided to switch over to the powdered form no, of weed? So You're totally what different. Happened. So when I was up in in, in Washington, um, Washington was is kind of the poster child of what not to do with legalization. Okay. Because they in had what way? they had medical first and it was fantastic, and then they had recreational, like cool, it was really expensive, right. but you know it opened sounds it like, up. Sounds like California. And <laughs> then they shut down medical. So entirely. Sh- en- entirely. What the fuck? Why would yes. they do that? That's so weird. Sh- I don't. So stupid. That's so what? Ha- so what they did was they Bad they for shut. Patients. Yeah, definitely, because they shut down the number of physical access points. Wow. Yeah. So like the number of just places you could go to purchase weed dispensaries. Yes. 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 Wow. Yes. Wow. Wow. Yes. And so because there was dispensaries there that were still only medical and not recreational, right. and those were all shut down. Yes. So there was like this really crazy. Really, so like towards the end, the amount of sales like Mondo was like steadily going down just because the number of access points were going down as wow. well. Wow. And so you guys were in a lot of medical dispensaries. Yeah, we were in over a hundred places that I was delivering to all myself. Recreational there, too, or just only um, medical? Only medical. Okay. Um, Is that uh, a dosage consideration? Like, um, no, it's just a licensing consideration, okay, got it. um, as was. And so, I actually, um, I had applied for a license, um, up in Washington State. Mm-hmm. And fun fact about Emily O'Brien, uh-huh. um, I used to be married. Okay, and <laughs> fun fact, fun fact, we'll get a little theme song, fun um, fact, yeah, da, 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 da. <laughs> but it was for show. Woo. But that's not what the government thinks, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Government, if you're listening to this, it's comedy. <laughs> We're cool. This That's is all fine. fine. Everything's divorced. fine. It's divorced Government, now. It's if you're fine. listening to this, Shh. stop listening. Yeah, stop it. Uh, <laughs> no, all my future dates. Don't listen. No. <laughs> Wow, I wanna I wanna ask more, but maybe for after. <laughs> but but so that little fun little uh-huh. curtail. Okay, so fun fact. You right? know, fun little fact. So I apply for a license, mm-hmm. and so when you're applying for a license, they need fingerprints. Uh-huh. Um, they need of uh, all criminal criminal records of mm-hmm. everyone that is going to be working in the company, financial responsibilities, Whoa. and their husbands and wives. Whoa. And guess who did not want to put forth their fingerprints so that I could get my license? Oh, no. 
Literally, you're that not person. allowed to get your yes. license unless the person you're married to yes. gives their permission. Yes. That is... In, in Washington at that point, yeah. Wow. That's, I had no idea that was ever a thing, and that is fully psychotic. <laughs> what the fuck? That's crazy. <laughs> That's okay, so, so insane. That was, that was awful. Yeah. But um, I, I honestly, I was like, wow, okay, uh, medical's gone in Washington, and I can't get right. a license, and I got totally boned. This yeah. This really sucks. That does really suck. It really sucks. So yeah. I thought, like, okay, Mon- Mondo's over. This is oh it. Oh, my God. This sucks. So yeah. I went back, to, I moved back to California, where I'm originally from, mm-hmm. um, and I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'll do it again. Because <laughs> why not, right? I'll start it up again. It's fine. Pull yourself Whatever. up. God Pull damn. Pull myself up. Um, so I, I started making the Mondo bars again, mm-hmm. and I got a commercial kitchen in Santa Cruz because they're very pot friendly down mm-hmm. there. And both my sister and my brother went to school in Santa Cruz, so I have a lot yeah. of experience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, after kind of making it for a couple months, that's when I really, really realized that a Mondo bar was not a daily edible for everyone. Mm, Because not everybody likes it. Not everybody wants to eat it every day. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so you know when you think of like Washington as like crunchy granola bar people? (laughs) They don't actually like them that much? No, no, no. No, they actually do. (laughs) No, like that's a real thing. Like that is a very... They were like, fuck yeah. We will eat it every day. Like I felt like I was pushing up there. Wow. No, like I had to like punch people. (laughs) Buy it. Eat my granola bar. Buy my granola. (laughs) Shoving it in their mouths. Just do it. (laughs) Um, they didn't want the granola in Santa Cruz. It strikes me as a pretty granola place, but maybe it's, like, a different kind of health foodie. Well, it was just, like, again, it just didn't really fit. Like, if I'm trying to make it for everyone, then I need to make sure that, like, the person who is going to be most stringent against not trying it is going to be okay. And who's that? I would say um, a soccer mom that does a lot of pill popping. Old white ladies. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You can say it. (laughs) You pulled the words right out of my mouth. (laughs) Thank you. Um, Yeah. So, like, how can then, like, this is this is not a a form for them because it's still an edible. We still think of it as a drug. You know, things like that. You don't know the dosage. Kind of a mystery. Yeah. How can we supersede that Mm -hmm. and make it like a supplement? Right. It's right. not. It's not a cannabis. It's it not does. Like, it reminds me a lot of like a protein powder or something. Yes, exactly. It's like exactly. it's easy to dose out. It's like totally like non discreet. Like it's just mm-hmm. yeah. So fortunately, before I moved from Washington down to California, um, these wonderful couple decided to uh, invest in Mondo, and they're like, you know, even though things are weird, we believe you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, and so I got a little bit of cushion. Mm-hmm. And so then they decided, you know, um, oh, I, I decided I'm not going to have the Mondo bars anymore. And so I need to stop production. I need to figure out what I'm going to do. Mm. So I stopped doing everything for two and a half months. And I was just doing product creation, product creation. Was that creation. a long time for you to not do something for two yes. and a half months? <laughs> <laughs> the way you said it, you were like, two and a half months. I was like, ooh, that kid, that, <laughs> you didn't like that, did oh, you? Oh, <laughs> 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 and so during those two and a half months, were you just kind of like hatching this baby of an idea that you were? Yeah, definitely. Okay, got yeah. it. Yeah, and so, but it, but it was really, really frightening. Um, I, I essentially had taken the leap of faith that I was, I had enough faith in myself that I was going to reinvent something, but I had no idea what. Right. And I had to do it in the time frame where money wasn't going to run out. Yeah, I, I <laughs> love that confidence though, being like, no, I am going to create something wonderful and amazing, like. You know, eventually it'll come out, but you know, we'll see when. Dude, I feel like you have to at some point mm-hmm. because, like, the there are a lot of you know hurdles you need to get through with business, and you need to always kind of have that kind of s- yeah. silly optimism, but like sure-footed right. optimism that, like, right? Is that some advice that you would give to other people who are definitely. like trying to just start their own business? Definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. I mean, you really like you can't think in one's even in the half second that you're gonna fail. Yeah. Because if you do, then you're gonna make a misstep. So right. You have to really kind of just believe in this. You have to have the blind confidence of an old white man. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> with, More or less. With, with with that safety net, that's so yes. nice. You're yeah. like, I I can say all these things because my right. Safety I net got is it. It's rock hard. So strong. <laughs> so. So I think we are almost going to close the show, but we have a little closing segment that we want to do. Um, we call it Puff or Pass. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a list of things, and you say Puff or Pass. So if you like it, Puff. If you're like not such a fan, Pass. Okay. All right? It's based on personal opinion, whatever you think. It's not a, There's no right or wrong answers here, people. All right. Speed round of Puff or Pass. Here we go. Dabbing. Uh, dip, I mean, 
Depends. Depends. On what situation. Um, if you are, if you have chronic pain or if you're asthmatic, mm-hmm. that's great. However, I don't actually like it so much because it's not a whole plant extract. It right. is kind of just like, it's like you're having sugar every single time rather than having honey or molasses or fucking <laughs> So you're like a somewhere between puff and pass on dabbing, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, so, so I say like dab? Yeah. Like puff, pass, dab? Dab right in the middle? All right. That's good. I'll take it. <laughs> How about vapes? Uh, puff. Puff, yeah. Love a good vape. Mm-hmm. CBD. Puff. Definitely puff, puff as you puff. can see here. Puff, puff, puff. <laughs> uh, weed lube. Puff. Same. And Definitely also, same. But it really kind of depends on what else is in there because... True. Yeah, there's some companies that are making things that mm-hmm. don't exactly jive with yep. uh, the flora and fauna. I know of one company, and I won't name them by name because I'm a nice person, um, who put sucrose in their Why? lube. It's sugar. It gives oh. you a yeast infection oh, yeah, in two seconds. Yeast? Yeah, right? Hey, it's like, you oh, you want to make some bread up there? Like, <laughs> fucking literally one second I'll get a yeast infection. I saw that, and I was like, I need to burn this. Like, Why? no way. Why? Um, so yeah, we lube. Yes, if it's puff, not yes, if it's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, and has no sugar in it, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Um waking yeah. and baking. Uh Sunday fun day. Mm. <laughs> puff on Sunday, pass yeah. on other days. Ah, depends on the person, but and yeah. depends on which day is your Sunday. True, 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 true. So, yeah. yeah, not everybody works Monday through Friday. Yeah. Very good point, mm-hmm. especially in this industry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Microdosing. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Puff, puff, puff. <laughs> <laughs> um, CBD skincare. Uh, yes. Yeah? Absolutely. Do you use it? Um, yeah, occasionally. Yeah. Um, especially when you have like eczema flare ups or mm-hmm. actually one time my dad, um, he has like pre cancer, pre mm. skin cancer, grew up in Florida. So they gave him this uh, cream to kind of like go in and eradicate all these things. And he went a little crazy with it. <laughs> <laughs> Just he was like, no more cancer, no more cancer. <laughs> and so he kind of gave himself like all these like chemical burns. And he was like, here, I'm going to put Neosporin and Vaseline, da, 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 nothing. And like I wow. come home for Christmas. And of course, I like have my apothecary. Right. Like, yeah, what do you Naturally. <laughs> Whole pharmacy yeah. in there. Just CBD yeah. products. Put on some CBD skin lotion. Two days. All of the welts were gone. Wow. Everything was just like, it was instantaneous and completely healed within a week. Amazing. Like that was like, when you, like, we all know that we have these like better health benefits and things right. like that. But when you see like a visual, like, oh my gosh, night yeah, and day. That's actually like, happening. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's yes. like, that's what gets somebody to start a weed company all on their own. I would imagine, <laughs> yeah, you know, something that's like something that, that can yeah, kind yeah, of invade. Yeah. You. Yeah, so puff, puff, puff. <laughs> puff, puff, puff. All right. How about uh, eating a roach after you smoke it? Oh, what? <laughs> Was this never something that people in high school said to you? Like, when I was in high school, kids would be like, oh, you have to eat the roach. Like, it's really gross, but it'll get you more high. And, like, in retrospect, what the fuck? Who? Like, it was probably some older brother, right? Yeah. Being like, they're like, huh, the yeah, roach. yeah, yeah, and, and, and drink the bong water after. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look at your eye. <laughs> so I can, uh, I think we can safely say that one's a pass. Yeah, we'll pass that um, one. And I can't say I recommend that to anybody. It definitely doesn't make you more stoned. It's super fucking disgusting. Um... All right. How about spliffs, tobacco and weed? Mm-hmm. Puff. Puff. Puff, puff, puff. puff. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. And here's the very last one. Bong rips. I love them. I Same. love them. I'm a big bong smoker. <laughs> I'm a very, I'm efficient. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's a lot of weed. Of it's quick. You You're just, just like, okay, you don't have to roll anything. Done. It's like, yeah, it's not a special occasion like this where you can yeah. sit and roll and all yeah. of that. Mm-hmm. Um, amazing. Well, thank you for joining us today. Um, do you have... Anything coming up that you wanted to plug or tell people to check out? Um, yeah, actually. Uh, so we ha- we haven't had THC out on you know uh, the st- the stores for probably about eight months now, mm-hmm. and people are like, "Where is it? Where is it?" <laughs> Myself included. <laughs> well, I can tell you something. Ooh, <gasps> here we go. Dun, dun, dun. It is coming out <gasps> very, Ooh, very, very soon. Beautiful. This is a blue dream powder. Is that yes, wow? And so is this a new a new formula? So this is still the original formula, but now it is going to be licensed Ooh. and back on shelves again. Very nice. <laughs> oh, because yeah. recreational makes you have like a bunch of different right, right, packaging right. and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right, right. So now we now we kind of had to work with a yes. couple of different things. Um, and so yeah, so this is going to be um, finally actual new news. I'm and, so excited. And literally, I've told no one about it. So. Wow. <laughs> so first announcement here. You yeah. heard it here first. It's yeah. coming back. It's coming back. The weed you love is coming back in style. (laughs) Um, This is like, I can't even, I mean, you know, 
I'm not just saying this because she's been a lovely guest on the podcast. Uh, this is like my favorite thing ever. I fucking love this stuff. And I'm like, I have been going to every dispensary and being like, do you guys have Mondo Meds here? Like, where's the Mondo Meds? So I'm one of those people. I'm very excited. <gasps> well, thank you. Keep thank an eye you. out. Um, thank you so much for joining us. I had a great time. Um, remember to subscribe to Mary Jane's YouTube and you can find Queens of the Stone Age on Apple Podcasts and iTunes. Remember to follow us and rate us because we need that as a podcast. It helps us a whole lot. Bye. <laughs> I'm chilling with the Queens of the Stone Age. <laughs>